All right. Hi, everybody. So today's is a little weird. It's technically I'm going to show you how to do an XY plot, but with replicates in this case. And the way that I mostly use this and what um, I think most people use Prism for in what I'm about to show you is drug inhibition data of cancer cells in this case. So let's meet some characters here. This is a cancer cell line that I use, DHL-16. It's from Stanford. Very fancy. Here's the date that we did the test. Here's this first drug. That is the shortened name of it. It inhibits oxidative phosphorylation, electron transport chain. We all love that. We love the Krebs cycle, right? PKM, this drug is an inhibitor of that gene PKM, which is mostly involved in glycolysis. Hooray. So you're kind of looking at my like years long, like um, Excel template for this. So obviously things here are a little more curated than you would expect the first time round. So here's what I've got. Here's 96 well plate. There it is. I think, well, you can't see the 96, but on the edges of the plate are just border. And there's some of these that are a little higher. We'll see that those are blanks, but as you can tell, there's three replicates of each drug in each of these rows. You'll notice on the top in bold, that is the amount in micromolars that I'm treating things with. Notice that I've got the green showing where there's a higher number. The thing that I do with the drugs is I treat them with or sorry, they treat the cells with the drug. And then after about 72 hours, we put something called Alamar Blue on. This will light up if the cells are alive. The blue molecule will be turned and converted into a pink molecule. Our plate reader can read that as a higher signal. Bam, we can use that as a surrogate for cell viability. So as you can see, even in just this heat map, things start to like kind of transition down a little slowly for IACs, but see that PKM right around here there's that like heavy death zone right there. Let's figure out how to get through that. So like I said, there's Alamar blue on the bottom and the top. Where these are coming from, see these wells and how they're a little higher than the surrounding ones? I actually put just blank Alamar blue in those border cells. And that's what we use as the value that since that's just the blue color, we take that totally out of everybody. And that's technically happening right here, for example. So like that's from that cell right there is getting taken out from there. So same thing I do just for the bottom controls right there, hooray. So we end up with these raw values after they've been subtracted from the blank, perfect. Next, what we're gonna do is we take a look at the DMSO average or the DMSO value in this case of this row. DMSO is a chemical that the drugs are in, we use it as a control in that case. So theoretically this row should be pretty close to what we would call like a 1.0 essentially. And you can kind of see that reflected here, at least the average. See how the average always comes out to a 1.0 with these ones. Okay, so moving through here, you take these values and you're saying, okay, how much of this drug value that I've clicked here is out of this amount up there, right? And that's going to give me a small proportion right here. So this section right here, about 16% of things were still alive. So that's a lot of death, right? I take those values here, I transpose them, and then we just get some averages here. This is kind of just a quick look. Here's where we're gonna start graph pad is at this section right here. So I've got these, uh, you know, these values for molarity, right? So let's go into here, let's grab an XY. Let's say that I want three replicate values. You can add more later if you want, like if you're gonna do six replicates, like if we're gonna redo this test. So in this case, um, you can probably end up doing mean SD and the number. It's not too bad. Um, SEM is okay since we do have very few samples, although standard deviation is also a pretty good, like simple metric. We only do have three at a time though. So I do understand that that's a little, you can get a little hairy in there. So let's go ahead and create this looking good. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take these values right here. Go like that. I'm going to say that this is, and actually, I think what I actually maybe need to potentially do is say, yeah, what am I going to have to do here? I'm actually going to have to, sorry, I had this as a backup. I'm going to have to borrow the other factors because technically what I want to do is actually take these as full, see, these are the numbers that I just had, but they were in micromole and here they're just in straight up moles. I'm going to just, yeah, sorry. I'm just kind of going to borrow from our friend over here. There we go. Yeah, imagine that I did that in my head. Perfect. All right, so this one is the IX drug. This one can be the PKM drug. Okay, so given that, now at each dose, I have three replicates. Perfect. So I do have an X and I do have a Y, so that looks pretty cool, right? 
I'm actually going to be able to go right in here. Notice I'm not going to take the DMSO because that is assumed to be just at the 1.0. That's what we're comparing everybody to. So we don't necessarily need to like actually include it, right? So I'm going to roll in here. Goes right in. Yep, I got it right. Perfect. There we go. All right. Well, that's hideous though because take a look, right? You don't want to connect them. Mean an error. Okay, mean an error. Look good. Fine. But notice that since these doses were built on, I made a dose of 20 micromolar, then 10, then to five, then two and a half, so on and so forth. That looks kind of gross, right? And it's not just a matter of adjusting the axes. So you actually technically have to do an analysis of this data first, and you technically want to transform the concentrations with that little X function right there. So typically you just are saying transform into logarithm tens. Perfect. Let's take a look. So once I make that transition right here, things are not going to be quite as quite as hideous to say the least, right? And if I want a new graph, and this time what I'm going to say is I need the transform data. There we go. Now we're starting to see something a little different here. Yeah, you'll I'll tell you a little secret or two about these drugs later. That's why they kind of look goofy as the curve, but they're not too bad. I should have used Venetoclax if I wanted perfect little curve data. But there we go. I have my transform data. That's what I really want to have on here, right? And technically what I next want is I need to have a nonlinear regression essentially. So if you click nonlinear regression, it'll take you to the shortcut. Let's just say one of your one of your typical ones is going to be log inhibitor versus response, three parameters, which means it can kind of curve and fit those. Okay, there we go. The line forms pretty nicely. I like that. Very good. Now, Technically, what we're doing here is we're saying, like, I think, what are we saying? Like, um, cell viability. There we go. Graph pad always adds that stupid space. Sorry. I always kind of like here to add, like, at 1.0, a line to show that's where, like, regular cells were, technically. And then equally, this is also, like, nicely set up, but I mean... Let's be honest, let's get some minor ticks in here. And have it look wrong there. Sweet, looks pretty good. Okay, taking a look through here, things are looking not too bad. If I wanted, like, so if we go back here and I take this and I say, all right, how about you give me, how about you give me just log 10 like that? Technically you can get to the same place. The model may not behave the same for the next step that we're about to do. But I will, I will give this side credit. This is pretty, like, this can make it look pretty nice. So I'm here, I'm going to add my line here. Fly. I'm also going to say, give me some ticks, four ticks. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, oop. I had the line in the wrong spot, sorry. Hideous. We want that in the left Y axis. There we go. Nice. Sweet. Okay, and then you can technically do the same linear or nonlinear regression here. But let's run through here because this is technically transform data. Hooray. Looking here. Sorry, I'm going to add my ticks because always a, always a big fan, obviously. Makes it look super fancy. Good job. Okay. All right. The next thing you can technically do here is if I look at my results, notice that I do, there's some valuable data in here like IC50, which is saying what is the value where 50% of the cells die Unfortunately, with what we've got here, these curves are really good looking. So if you wanted to, sorry, if you wanted to be, you know, if, if this is what you want to face, people to face the nation with kind of right here, like what you would present, these curves would be good. However, it might be a little better to try this section. So what we can do here is say analyze, we can say nonlinear regression, it's going to say, do you know, do you want to do this again? I want to make a new table in this case. I'm still going to do three parameters, but I'm going to click up here at constraint. The bottom must and the top must be equal to 1.0 must be the top. The bottom must be zero. Thus, now when the IC50 forms, it will be right in the middle and it will suggest this value is where 50% of the cells died based on your data. The other one just did where the rel cells relatively started. So notice here with IAX, I'm going to kind of turn this... Um, yeah, let's do some fun stuff here. Let's turn IX, uh, let's turn that like some nice purple. There we go. 
notice that it starts like pretty bad already, right? So this curve actually would say 50% of the curve, where in the curve did it die 50%? You got plenty of drugs that the minute they hit the cell, like in this case, it starts killing them. And that's the case, the, why these drugs are kind of special is that the metabolism stuff can be very, very sensitive subject to say the least with the drugs. That may need some borders, I can't lie to you. Okay, let's try this. There we go. Always reduce the border size. Get me down to this fun money green. Oh, that's a mess. Sorry. Nice. It looks good. That makes the purples jealous. Let's make them have some borders too. Okay. There we go. Yeah, let's leave it a little lighter. Nice. Okay. So things are looking good. Again, you probably wouldn't need that. Well, here's what you can do with this. This was the DHL 16 cell line. So you can just say like, that's a, not a bad way to put it right up there. Perfect. So now that I did the constrained one, see that? Now it's going to give me a pinpointed value to the estimate of where it would have been at 50% depth. This gives me the exact molarity here. So I think based on my, yeah, based on my intuition, that would be 0 0.1651 micromolar or I think uh, one. 65 nanomolar is my my guess. I don't want to do math on the fly in my head. I should be I should be more measured. My bad. Okay. Fun times. So that's not a bad um, setup for using replicate data. You can also see, like, obviously, we do have some pretty like some of the data in here did get pretty wiry and like kind of crazy. So like, look at this one right here. That one. See how that one like really spread out a bunch. This would probably be data that like we're looking forward to adding a th another set of replicates to versus a lot of these other sections up here. See how tight some of these data were and how they're reflected like that down here with the curves, like not even breaching the symbols, essentially. In a perfect world, you want something around like this size or a little lower in that case. But obviously, drugs and cells are sort of their own coyotes. Um and that can can definitely happen. So trying to think any other fun stuff I can do. I know there's some goofy, um, I know there's some goofy stats or like things you can do. I don't, well, spline is like, spline's a little, yeah, I think it's more just like for, yeah, let's see. Yeah, you can do a smoothing spline. You can connect the points. Let's see what comes out. Yeah, see, spline is one where it's like going to really try and follow each dot, like without any like changes essentially you'd probably want to use like a three or four parameter curve instead and that's going to make more sense but spline couldn't be used for different data and like i said i'm using the drug data here so it's like it's kind of its own niche thing sometimes but for the most part i might actually i actually kind of like this i'm going to turn these i'm going to turn these um color schemes and what i usually use now here's the other kind of goofy thing if you do a non-linear regression See how many examples you actually have in here. This is its own, this is like almost its own thing in terms of um, in terms of, ex, ex, uh, of prism here. And actually this is gonna be something fun. I didn't even have confidence bands in here. So I'm gonna add those. Oh man, that I actually really like that. <laughs> so to get rid of the curve, like, so for example, you probably wouldn't do the hard curve that we did with the constrained. So once you have those data, you can like, I'm going to just get rid of that because otherwise that curve is going to get really nasty in there. And now instead, you do have, like we've done before with XY plots, you do have a really nice confidence interval in those dots. And if I wanted to say, I mean, you can probably just match them like we've, like we've been doing. So there they are. Yeah. There we go. Oh, come on. There he goes. Yep. And then the, the nice green one. Not bad. The color is a little light. And see my air. Well, now technically that's the dark side of the confidence bands is that it's going to send you down into zero like amounts, which technically not possible. So it's going to get mad. This is also going to get pretty mad that we cut it off since that had a pretty higher value there. But that's going to show a lot more here, I think. So looking pretty good. And then fives are always a little aggressive. Um, you could always take that down to like 20% cutoffs in that case. Sweet. This actually doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to start, I'm going to start using this color scheme a little more. It's a lot of error. Dang it. 
So yeah, each one of that's why it says 400 is each one of those little dots right there, like got cut off down here because these were so low and dead. Those will tighten if you add more. So like I said, I would probably, I'm going to rerun this cell line and then add that to the next one. A perfect, honestly, a perfect time. My students hate hearing this is that you probably got to run an experiment three times before you're like, all right, we're good. Sweet. So thanks for joining today. Hopefully this was a fun semi intro to drug curves and, and prism. Um, there's different ways to do things, but I do, um, I do kind of enjoy this one.